What's the one thing that most major cities throughout history have in common? War! What? No. Well, sure, I guess that too. But the correct answer is water. When civilizations first started some 5,000 years ago, they were almost all founded along rivers, since they provided water to drink and fertile lands to farm. But as time went on and trade became more essential, water started serving an even greater purpose. It was the most convenient form of transportation. Because of this, most cities were built on natural harbors, such as bays or large rivers or lakes. That is, until the 1800s. With the invention of the railroad and later airplanes, highways, and air conditioning, people can now build cities wherever the heck they want, resulting in places like Phoenix, where 5 million people live in the hot, dry Arizona desert. But while it looks more like a creek than a river and is by no means navigable, the Salt River does technically run through Phoenix's city limits, so Phoenix wouldn't qualify for the list. No, the following metropolises aren't just not near a major river, bay, or lake, they're actually not near any natural waterway at all, and wouldn't be inhabitable if it weren't for human innovation. These are 10 massive cities that should not exist. Number 10. Las Vegas, Nevada. If it weren't for organized crime and illegal activities, Las Vegas would still be a small town. Founded in 1905 as a water stop on the LA to Salt Lake City Railroad, Sin City was hardly a city until 1931, when its population grew from 5 to 25,000 due to the construction of the Hoover Dam. Vegas was the closest town to the build site, and since many of the workers were young single men, a huge market for saloons, brothels, casinos, and dance halls emerged. And in an effort to increase the state's revenue and population following a decline in the mining industry, Nevada legalized gambling. Which, combined with the newly invented air conditioning and cheap electricity from the dam, turned Vegas into the perfect permissive vacation destination, especially with LA being just a four-hour drive away. As such, Bugsy Siegel and the Mafia, with the help of Mormon money, created resort-style casinos shortly following World War II, and the rest is history. Vegas's population boomed from just 25,000 in 1950 to nearly 2.3 million in the metro area today. The only problem is that it's also one of the hottest and driest cities with only around 4.2 inches of annual rainfall. So water availability has become a concern, with Lake Mead, where 90% of Vegas's water is sourced from, continuing to get drier every year. Number 9. Sana'a, Yemen. While Vegas is barely 100 years old, Yemen's capital, Sana'a, has existed for over 2,500. But its location doesn't make much sense either. Yemen is one of the most water-scarce countries and home to zero year-round rivers. And while Sana'a does have a few wattis, or dry riverbeds which flow for a couple months during the wet season, there is no permanent source of water in the city. Meaning, for much of its history, Sana'a had to depend almost entirely on rainwater collection. Now, no one knows exactly when or why it was established, but by the 7th century AD, Sana'a had become a major trading center and cultural hub for the spread of Islam. The real population boom didn't occur occur until the 1970s, however, when a mass rural migration to the capital started in the search for jobs and a higher quality of life, since Yemen is one of the most impoverished countries. The population jumped from just 135,000 in 1975 to over 3 million today. And while the Tawila Aquifer, discovered in 1972, has helped reduce stress on the water supply, its water is currently being overdrawn four to five times faster than it can be replenished, meaning this beautiful historic city, with its thousand-year-old mosques and unique tower homes is predicted to completely run out of water by 2030. Number 8. Harare, Zimbabwe. Harare is nowhere near as beautiful as the country's Victoria Falls, but with around 33 inches of annual rainfall and plenty of trees and greenery, Zimbabwe's capital seems quite hospitable. But its location is just random. The city was founded as a fort back in 1890 when the British South Africa Company decided to take a break on their trek through Mashana land during colonization. For some reason, they picked the area despite the soil being overly saturated, but gold was soon discovered nearby, which led to a railroad being built in 1899 to link the city to the ocean, turning Harare into a trading and mining hub, and in 1923, the capital of then British colony Southern Rhodesia. Industrialization and post-World War II immigration helped the city grow, but it wasn't until Zimbabwe's independence in 1980 when the population ballooned from just 600,000 to over 3 million today. And while there originally were streams in the area, the British drained and built roads on top of most of them, so now the city's water supply almost entirely relies on the man-made Lake Chivero Reservoir, around 20 miles away. 
The only problem is the lake is now so heavily contaminated with raw sewage, which, combined with the ongoing drought, has created huge problems with getting clean water to Harare's residents, resulting in a cholera epidemic in 2008. Number 7. Quito, Ecuador While most British settlements in the Americas were built along natural harbors, many of the largest cities in Latin America are far from the coast. This is due to the Spanish conquering previous indigenous communities and building on top of them since the large population centers meant more laborers. And many of them, such as Quito, were built high in the mountains since the climate was more pleasant. Originally settled around 10,000 years ago, Ecuador's capital was conquered by the Incan Empire in the late 1400s before the Spanish took control in 1534. The population was only around 10,000 by the time Ecuador gained independence in 1822, however, and didn't explode until the 70s with a booming oil and textile industry attracting rural folks to the city. But wait, why shouldn't Quito exist? It looks so green! Well, yeah, it gets a lot of rain, and technically the narrow Machangara River does run through the south outside of town, but this is only due to unplanned sprawl extending the city to be 45 miles long, as there just isn't room for 3 million people in the 4 mile wide valley that Quito sits in. And the river isn't used for much, as 97% of the city's water comes from catchment systems in the surrounding volcanoes. Oh yeah, did I mention the city is literally surrounded by active volcanoes? Plus, being 9,300 feet up practically on the equator also gives it some of the highest solar radiation on Earth, sometimes reaching a UV index of 24. Number 6. Amman, Jordan While not having been continuously inhabited for the entirety of its existence, Amman is the oldest city which still stands today, having been founded around 7,300 BC. And that's why, despite having no permanent river, it is where it is, as it existed long before maritime trade and the hills combined with the seasonal Wattis made the arable land great for farming. Because of this and an abundance of sandstone and limestone, it became the capital of the Ammonite Kingdom in the 13th century BC and an important trading hub for the next 2,000 years. Multiple earthquakes in the 8th century rendered most of the city uninhabitable, however, and from then until the Ottoman Empire resettled it with Circassian refugees in 1878, it was mostly an abandoned site, used occasionally by nomadic tribes. But Jordan's willingness to take in refugees throughout its history is a huge reason why Amman has grown so quickly. From just 20,000 thousand residents in 1940 to 4.6 million today. This has caused huge water concerns, however, with the King Talai Dam 25 miles north of the city not being large enough to support the accelerating population. So a 200-mile-long pipeline was built to the D.C. aquifer in the southernmost part of the country in 2013. Unfortunately, though, this aquifer does not replenish and will likely run out of water within 50 years. Number 5. Riyadh, Saudi Arabia More so than any place in the world, Riyadh is a megacity which should not exist. It's over three times the size of Vegas and located in an even hotter and drier desert with no source of water even remotely close by. In fact, the only way Saudi Arabia's capital is able to get any water at all is through desalination plants in the Persian Gulf, which are then pumped 300 miles to the city. Logical? Probably not, but neither is the plan to terraform Riyadh into an artificial green oasis by lowering temperatures and planting 7.5 million trees. I guess when you're sitting on the planet's largest oil reserve, though, you have enough FU money to build whatever you want. I mean, look at their plan to build the line, a 1,600-foot-tall, 106-mile-long, completely indoor megacity that's expected to house 9 million people and will cost hundreds of billions to build, in an area which receives just one inch of rain. Now to be fair, when Riyadh was first settled in the 5th century, there was a wadi resulting in fertile soils, but today it's dry year-round, with any scarce rainfall instantly evaporating. Still, the small village expanded after being named the capital of Saudi Arabia in 1932, and the discovery of oil in 1938, and the rapid economic growth, along with King Saud's vision to modernize the city, caused the population to swell from just 40,000 in 1940 to nearly 8 million today. Number 4. Nairobi, Kenya The land Nairobi sits on was originally a swamp and relatively infertile, yet the British still decided to build an entire town and rail depot here in 1899, as it was around the halfway point between Mombasa on the coast and Kampala on Lake Victoria. In constructing the city, however, the British drained and built on top of many of the area's streams and swamps. And while the Nairobi River technically does still exist in parts of the city today, it's very shallow, full of trash, and countless roads have been built 
built on top of it. Because of this, it serves almost no purpose to the city, which gets 95% of its water from the Tana River watershed 50 miles north of town. And while this likely wouldn't be an issue if it weren't for Nairobi's ongoing drought and the population boom following Kenyan independence from just 250,000 residents in 1960 to 10.8 million today, demand for water now exceeds supply by 600%. 65% of residents currently lack access to a reliable source of clean water, and this will only get worse as more rural East Africans move to Nairobi, since it's the largest economy in the region. Number 3. Johannesburg, South Africa For some reason, humans have always been obsessed with the flimsiest metal. Thousands of cities have exploded in population overnight upon the discovery of gold, with millions embracing harsh environments and even risking death on their long, perilous journeys to the ends of the earth for some of the hardware. And while most of these boom towns became ghost towns once all the gold was mined, in Johannesburg, they never stopped mining. When the Witwatersrand Gold Reef was discovered in 1884, it led to the most massive gold rush in history, with hundreds of thousands of prospectors arriving in soon-to-be Johannesburg, then just the land of rocky outcrops and a few bushes and streams. But the lack of a local water supply didn't matter. There was gold to be mined. They could figure out the details later. So despite being a disorganized mess, the population accelerated from just 3,000 in 1887 to over 100,000 by 1896, and greed of the gold led to the second Second Boer War, where the British seized control of the city. Many laws based on racism and segregation soon followed, eventually leading to apartheid in 1948. But all that gold also led to a diversified economy and Johannesburg becoming the largest financial center in Africa. And once apartheid ended and better opportunities for all residents were possible, the population boomed from 1.9 million in 1992 to 10.5 million today. This has created extreme water concerns, however, as there is no river in town and many of the streams were covered in concrete as the city developed. In fact, if it weren't for engineering marvels, like the pumping of water through hundreds of miles of tunnels across multiple mountain ranges from Lesotho, another country, Johannesburg probably wouldn't be able to still exist. Number 2. Tehran, Iran A friend of mine from Utah who once visited Tehran said it looked like Salt Lake City on steroids. But while they're both capitals in semi-arid regions with a big salt lake and gorgeous mountains nearby, Salt Lake City has a few rivers as well. Tehran, on the other hand, has no permanent waterway, because the city was built with the strategy of not being invaded as the priority. The area was originally settled around 8,000 years ago, with the ancient city of Ray, an important stop on the Silk Road along the Karaj River around 20 miles south of Tehran, becoming the third largest city in Western Asia by 1200 AD. Its 500,000 residents were massacred during the Mongol invasion of 1220, however, with any survivors fleeing to the then small town of Tehran, which remained small until it was chosen as Iran's capital in 1786. And since Iran had a history of being invaded, Tehran's geography made it an excellent excellent defensive position with massive mountains surrounding it on three sides. And with the nationalization of the oil industry and revival of a free press and trade unions following the removal of the Shah post-World War II, Tehran flourished into a modern, advanced city, with dams being built on many rivers in the surrounding mountains to supply water to the growing population which is now 16 million despite the country turning back into a theocracy. Now before we get to number one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and a few honorable mentions that technically do have very small rivers, but still would have grown into massive cities regardless, are Atlanta, Georgia and the USA, which has the Chattahoochee River on the outskirts of the city limits, but its growth is mainly due to it being a rail and transportation hub, and later the epicenter of the civil rights movement. Santiago, Chile, which does have the Mapocho River running right through the city center, but it's very small and practically dry for most of the year due to Chile's 12-year-long drought. And while I really wanted to include Milan, Italy, as it's fascinating that the city was only able to grow following Leonardo da Vinci's invention of the canal, which connected the city to nearby lakes and rivers, and eventually the ocean for trade, a small river called the Lambro does flow through the east side of the city. But without further ado... Number 1. 
Mexico City, Mexico. Unlike most places on this list, the location of North America's largest city once made perfect sense. Built on two islands in Lake Texcoco in 1325, Mexico City's precursor, Tenochtitlan, quickly grew and became the capital of the Aztec Empire by 1430. And it was far larger than any European city with an estimated two to 400,000 residents by the time the Spaniards saw it in 1519. Just two years later, however, the Spanish destroyed all the dams the Aztecs had built to be able to control the level of the lake and thus prevent flooding, and then they completely razed the city in the months to follow. And just like with Quito, they made it the capital of New Spain due to the already large indigenous population that could be forced to work in rebuilding the city. But instead of rebuilding the dams, the Spanish decided to just fully drain the lake in 1629, which caused enormous ecological consequences, with parts of the valley Mexico City sits in turning semi arid. But despite having a severe lack of water, with the aquifer that supplies most of the city being overdrafted much faster than it can be replenished, Mexico City has turned into a world-class city, with a population of nearly 22 million that continues to grow.